today I will be reviewing um, and testing what I hoped was a dual power engine um, but it might not be um, it's meant to be a clone of the Honda GX2 no GX170 or GX200 engines um, same thing as them um, same as Eberth, Eberth is another company that clones them as well or it's just one company that makes engines and they put their brand names on it um, I don't know so I'll get this opened up and I'll have a look but um, I do not own anything petrol related so I'll be running on propane I've got a special carburetor for that which uh, might fit, I don't know I think it will um, so I cannot comment on how it's going to perform on petrol so on the box it does say made in China, so I um, don't know what to expect. So let's uh, open all of this up. That's how it's packaged. I will say it is reasonably light. Um, it doesn't really weigh all that much at all. It might weigh about, I don't know, 14 or 15 kilograms. Um, so it's not too heavy. It'll be a wee bit heavier than this uh, old Briggs & Stratton. So this engine cost £83.96 from the eBay seller Most Wanted Online. Shut at you, stupid fish man. And, uh, so that's a, a good enough price. Um, I'll have to check and see if it's got oil in it. Now the reason I bought this was because I thought this one here was absolutely knackered. Um, but I, was just, I just needed a new spark plug, that's all it was. But Another issue is it doesn't really have a, any sort of governor on it. I'd need to make one up again. And it's, I'm having other problems with a carburetor. Like I cannot get it to idle. I can only get it to run like quite fast. Um, so may just as well have got it. So it smells like it's never had petrol in it. And it's had oil in it but um, they've taken it out again. So these carburetors uh, look pretty much the same. So. I'll have to get this one taken off and replaced with my uh, propane one um, before I can actually do anything else. I have put oil in it so that's fine. And it's uh, very easy to pull as well. Which might mean it has a compression release, I don't know. Maybe that's a diesel engine thing. Oh, one other thing to check. No, it's not a dual powered engine, it's something else. Um, so. Yeah, probably same manufacturer, same company, just different labels. So yeah, um, it's pretty much identical to the Eberth and Dual Power and all the clones. They're all the same. Probably, um, I'm not, probably Life and another manufacturer as well. So it's probably they're probably all the same. Quality of this bit here isn't that good, so I think air will air will leak in a little bit round there, um, past the air filter, but um, won't matter too much. Spark plug is also a uh, quite a big one. That's that's different to this one. That's, that's quite, that's an older spark plug. That's a CG8. That's an LD. No, that's an F7 TC in there. F7 TC. I do intend to use this engine on a generator project, so it doesn't actually have a generator governor, as what's called a utility governor. So I might figure out some sort of servo system that will respond to generator load. Uh, it's going to be an inverter generator, so generator head for it sitting over there, um, and that will be connected to a battery. Um, and an inverter, so when there's not very much power needed, that will pretty much just idle away. So changing the carburetor, I think two bolts have to come out, and I have to very carefully um, take the linkages off there as well. I'm not exactly sure how the governor on this is going to work. Um, I don't think it is like this old engine where there was actually um, a plate inside that responded to the airflow from the fan. I think this one's got a centrifugal governor um, inside it. Have a look. Yeah, I think it does it's coming up from somewhere inside there, so I don't think it is an air plate design. So I might just take the fuel tank off, I don't know. Um, 
might just be best to. Uh, but the difference with this carburetor is it seems to have some sort of uh, f fuel on on and off valve. This one doesn't. I'm just taking these bolts out here. Um, you have to take out these two, um, and they're just like long bolts that go straight through the carburetor. And I'll take out this top one here. Ah, well, the fishman's alright actually. Um, it's good getting salmon and stuff. Um, but that should be this ready to come off now. And it's a bit, it's a bit stuck. Well, just as well I was taking it apart because uh, look at this, um, that gasket has just been sort of flung on there hopelessly. Um, that ain't very good. Well, that's quite awful actually. Um, it's like it's the wrong size and shape as well. It doesn't really fit properly. I don't know what I've stopped with that. It's the wrong gasket anyway, and it's not, it's not, it's not the right one. I'll try and salvage what I can, or use Hylomar blue um, gasket compound. Yeah, that's not very good, is it? Right, we've got our. Uh, Linkages in here, so I just two that have to come off. And this is a propane carburetor. So we're looking here. Just goes on that bit there. So this has come off like that, and there's just a large plastic piece to remove, um, which held stuff like the fuel holes and that. So that could probably. Just would have thought it would pop off. Should just be stuck on like sort of the gasket. That's fairly tightly on there. There's like a spacer so I think I will need it. I was a little bit confused there because it's like it's uh, sitting at wide open throttle all the time. Um, that's right down it's at slowest position um, when it should really be there but I think that's how it was to start with so it may be something to do with the governor. Um, I'll put a link in for this carburetor um, because also with the carburetor you get a special zero pressure regulator as well which uh, basically only supplies the propane when the engine is running because of the vacuum in the carburetor. So I need to put a longer pipe in this fuel tank, uh, maybe put a, like about an extra five centimetres on it because uh, fuel inlet on this carburetor is at a different angle um, so need a little bit more length I think I'll just leave the tank off so that's the governor there or the output of the governor not 100% sure how it actually works there's something inside that spins and then pushes on another linkage internal to the engine and it will move this back and forward so I reckon when the engine speeds up and I've got on the slowest setting that will go back like that and then uh, go down to the lowest throttle. I don't really know what this is. Um, something to do with the ignition. The ignition coil is going to be uh, hidden in there somewhere. So the choke lever simply just goes on onto that post like this. But uh, I did have to shave a little bit out inside because it wasn't really fitting that, that easily on this other carburetor. But it's fine now. Before I put the petrol tank back on, I'll see about finding a fuel shut-off valve. <coughs> um, the reason being really, obviously so I could switch off the petrol if I ever do have any and because possibly propane air mixture could maybe come back through there and accumulate inside the tank and if a backfire was to happen it might backfire into the tank and explode um, very unlikely I know but um, not entirely impossible I wouldn't think 
I am now ready to start the engine for the first time. I've just covered up the petrol inlet with a bit of blue tuck just to stop any extra air getting in where it's not meant to be. Um, fuel is on. It's obviously not flowing because the engine's off, but uh, let's try and start it. Throttle's at the lowest. Because it's propane, you might not actually need to use a choke that much. That's a choke on and that's it off. So. <coughs> Let's just try it. Okay, so propane is on. Throttle down all the way. Ignition switch is on. I'll just find somewhere so it's safe to hold it. Okay, so that's fine. There's just a little screw on the side of the regulator here. Um, I had that all the way in because the Briggs and Stratton engine was just roaring its head off all the time. So let that screw out a bit. Try again. Hmm. I've got all our fuel on. Uh, This might take a while, I'm just messing about with it. Um, might be too rich. Turn, turn the screw in a bit. Oh Christ, that was a big backfire. Seems okay then. Um, I just have to play about with it a bit. Um, it seems just like it best with that screw all the way in. Uh, so I have to say that engine is quite a bit quieter and smoother running than this Briggs and Stratton one. Um, I'll just start this one up and give you an idea of uh, what the difference is. This is a very old and noisy flathead engine. And it can kick quite frequently when you try and start it as well. So much so that it kind of rips the cord out of your hand or it uh, totally just falls over. Uh, but yeah, it's bloody noisy. Um, and doesn't start very easily. A bit noisier. So next plan of action, get the new engine 
mounted on this big thick board here um, and get driving that generator and to finish off um, here is the engine on my generator this is also acting as a starter motor which I'll demonstrate just now Well, I was doing tests with it earlier and I was able to get 1200 watts out of it but um, with the belt in this configuration with the small pulleys the belt was getting hot and I could smell it burning so I had to stop but yeah it's a good engine.